गाइस आई एम दत्ता बेनोर क्रिएशन हेयर लेट्स इंट्रोड्यूस मिस्टर रोशन फ्रॉम ग्रीन गाय रॉक हाय दत्ता हेलो रोशन कैन यू जस्ट ऑन द मशीन एंड कैन यू शो द माय टेक्नीशियंस एंड एक्सपर्ट्स आर देयर डेफिनेटली दत्ता वी कैन शो अवर टीम श्योर एंड इफ दे हैव एनी अदर क्वेरीज पोस्ट दैट वी कैन आंसर द सेम श्योर दैट्स गुड थैंक यू सो शिवम ओवर हियर विल एक्चुअली स्विच द मशीन ऑन फ्रॉम दैट एंड वी हैव अनदर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव किरण आल्सो हु इज हियर सो इन ऑर्डर टू शो यू द एंटायर वर्किंग motor supply box which is here so shivam will actually pull the lever which will show that uh, the power is actually cut now we can actually show it to you the readings so you can see the readings here sir it's actually zero that means there is zero input which comes running at about 1000 rpm currently so once it comes over here the pump we can do distribute it out at the back so we have connected it to a particular pump set so see you can actually see that this is the output cable which goes back to the bus bar and from there you can notice this particular line is come if you follow it it goes all the way to this particular panel We are connected to the motor. So you come and see over here. Right after Kiran press it, you will see about 400 volts. Now you see that current is actually passing through. And if you see here, you have noticed that uh, the motor is coming. So this shows the proof of concept that with zero percent input we can produce about hundred percent output. Okay. So if you all do come to the particular uh, distribution box right now, I can show you that there will be a sudden drop in the kilowatts which are there. That is because there is a load. So it shows that power is actually being consumed somewhere. Yeah, currently it's showing about 25 kilowatt. Earlier it was 38. Earlier it was uh, 30, and now it's showing about uh, 25. So now, if we have the motor switched off, so I can just ask my other representative. Motor off. Now if we switch it off, you see that the kilowatt slowly start increasing. So now you will see that it's gone from 25 to 26, and then it will keep gradually increasing up until what it was earlier. So 
this is to show you all that our particular uh, proof of concept works efficiently. Now if you also notice that uh, the machine is uh, capable of running for about 100 hours and uh, it cannot be switched off from the starter point over there. So it can only be switched off from this particular panel over here. So here and over here would show how it's switched off. So once you press the stop button over here, so then you'll notice that it stops. So if you keep seeing the panel also, it will show a slow reduction of kilowatts and then it will hit zero. So this means that the machine is off. Since there are big wheels which are suspended there, and slowly turn, turn and lock. Now if you see the tachometer also here, the RPM. Once the machine is off, it will run as slow as it can and then it uh, switches off by itself. It just stops. So now that we have concluded the demonstration, sir, if you, any of you all have any queries, I'm more than happy to answer all of them. Now we have certain queries. We would like to uh, hear some good answers. From oh, I'm more than happy actually to answer. Thanks. Thanks. Mr. Roshan, I have lots of questions from my team. So can you please answer for that? Uh, we're more than happy to answer all of them. Sure, please start okay. question. Okay, so I mean we have some questions from yes, our sir. team. So like to understand, so we have flywheels and some pulleys are all there. So can you explain what is the use of the flywheel and what how it works this technology? So this particular technology is called as flywheel technology. Flywheel technology is quite predominant, has been there throughout the world, but this is the first of its kind machine which gives like zero percent input and produces about hundred percent output. So that was a demonstration which I associated. Various other people have told that they get about 10% uh, input and then you get 100% output. But we are trying to demonstrate over here and show that with 0% input you get 100% output. So that's what our technology is all about. And I have one question. Yes. The technology which you are referring, yes. whether it is patent? Ah, yes sir. Our technology is actually patented. Do you produce these kind of machines? Yes sir, we actually produce these machines. So we have our uh, particular uh, like factory set up in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so it's in a place called Totkaran. So we produce these machines. What is the maximum and minimum capacity of this uh, system that you build? So we have machines which range from about uh, 10 kilowatt all the way up to 10 megawatts. So what is the space required? So this is, what is the size of this? Uh, what is the capacity of this? And for this machine, so what is the space that is required? So uh, if we just say for uh, a 10 kilowatt, you require about uh, 10 by 10 the space and for about uh, 10 megawatt you require about uh, like uh, 100 by 100. Excellent. How many hours these machines continuously run without input? Sir, uh, we have uh, been able to prove that it's, uh, it has been running for about 100 hours continuously. Post which we will actually ask you to uh, switch it off for about an hour so that the system cools down. But for about 100 hours it's proven. In which on-grid locations are these machines suitable? So when you state on grid, actually, uh, like uh, we have these different thermal power plants, you have uh, the various other places where on grid kind of works. So over there, this can actually go and act as a uh, subsidiary for them. So if you are talking about windmills or anything, they are all seasonal or solar and all of it. So in those four months in which it can run very well, they absorb. So let's keep solar as an example. It can absorb sunlight for about four months continuously. Since it's seasonal. Post that you can actually take this particular machine and utilize it as an on-grid capacity and it, it can actually give you equal amount of uh, power. Uh, what about applications in off-grid? What kind of uh, scenarios? So for off-grid, uh, if you actually look at places which are remote 
and uh, in, uh, looking at different uh, different other industries. We are talking about heavy industries or uh, mining, all these uh, places where they have these crusher units and all of it. So after it works very well over that. This machine which we are, we are seeing here, so is this a prototype or production ready? And where is your production unit? So this particular machine is not a prototype. This has been running for about, uh, it even ran on grid. This is a particular machine which ran on grid for about two and a half years. And our production unit, uh, like what I stated earlier, it's in a place called Tutukran. It's located mm -hmm. in Tamil Nadu, India. Can I have one more question? Yes. Sir. So this machine have any national and international recognition as of now? Yes, sir, it does have national and international recognition. How different is your machine as compared to thermal or nuclear or any solar or any windmill kind of technology? How different is your technology? So, so if we start taking one by one. So let's take nuclear for example. Okay. So uh, nuclear, let's look at the cons of it. One, it's radioactive. It's very hard to dispose. And all the people who are surrounding it, they are, they are in that panic state, like what if a meltdown happens? What if anything happens? And most of all, it pollutes the air. Now, if you compare that to our particular machine, our machine uh, gives out zero emissions. So it does not produce any pollution, anything as such. And uh, our machine can reduce uh, everyone's power bill by about 50%. So that is something which our machine does. Now let's go to, uh, flip over to another. Let's go to thermal. Thermal coal is the input. So coal again pollutes. And uh, by uh, taking a lot of coal from the earth, we are depleting the natural resources. So all that comes into consideration over there. Whereas our particular machine does not do anything like that. For solar, you would require huge uh, places of land. You will have to locate a lot of people, they will have to move from one place to another. And so that natural habitat gets lost. The same goes even for windmills also. Because for windmills, you will uh, you'll require it in certain windy places and such. So there are lots of cons when it comes to all of them. But compared to our particular technology, we do not have any con per se. So this particular machine gives out zero emissions, completely eco friendly, and it's able to produce similar output. What is the kind of impact that you think this can create globally? So when we uh, look at a global scenario, like what I stated earlier, uh, when we are looking from an input and perspective, if any machine is able to give out zero carbon rate, or if it's like producing zero emissions, that is said to be one of the best machines ever. And uh, looking at another billing perspective, you would uh, probably be uh, billed for about 100% of what I will use. So we will be able to reduce that by about 50 So thinking from a global scenario, we will be making a lot of people uh, save a lot of money. So is there any plans to go global on with this machine or so as you said global right? So have you uh, in, apart from this location any other place you have deployed and uh, what is your uh, plan for to go global on this? So uh, we actually plan to do international collaborations. So this is, that's a specific idea which we have. So we have chosen about 52 countries currently. So for these uh, 52 countries, uh, we have uh, kept it on our particular website. So to know more, I would request you to visit our website to have these international collaborations. Can you explain done. the website name, please? It's uh, www.greengyropowertech.com. Okay. Uh, Mr. Roshan, I think uh, this is a 50 kilowatt mission. Yes. But I would like to ask you, what is the maximum megawatt power capacity can be generated in a single space? So that depends on the specifications which are given. So currently we are producing machines for, uh, between the range of 10 kilowatt, 10 megawatts. So based on your specifications, we will be able to give more. Suppose if you are giving about 100 megawatts, for example, I can uh, give you about 10 of 10 megawatt machines. So it depends on what you all give as requirements. Coming to the user point of view, I think now it will be advantageous if you, you know, engage with the government. How do you plan to engage with the government? So with governments, what we actually plan to do is uh, we look at local governments. So wherever we go, you have like let's keep. For example, India also, we have state, central, and all of it. So internationally also when you're looking at, because we are planning to spread our wings everywhere, go global, it's not just local. So for every particular place, we would like to uh, sit and discuss along with the local uh, government, try to understand how we can like make this particular uh, product go forward to market. The local state government? Yeah, with the local government. What is your plan on working with private operators? So with private uh, operators, so what we are actually doing right now is, uh, if you do visit our site, we have something called as channel partners. So uh, we are planning to keep one particular channel partner state-wise, and that channel partner can go and give out our particular machines to all these private organizations. They can come uh, forward towards one particular channel partner. The reason why we are doing this bifurcation is because when you go to different other states, you have uh, different cultural people, and people with different uh, language barriers also can come into place. So once we have a representative of theirs locally, Trust also builds. 
So we'll be able to uh, get across that crowd also. So this one, when you said about the stage, so in the geography of India, if you see, there are hot like desert region and there is cold place like snow region. So how this power generation will affect when there is a environmental temperature uh, changes? So, so we actually give uh, customized uh, products based on the geographical region also. Because not, let's not just say India, let's go global also. There are lots of places where there are deserts, where it's like uh, it's windy or it's like pure winter or that's really cold, uh, sub-cold uh, region. So we will customize our machines based on the habitat for whichever region it is and then we will deploy our machines. So when you say customize, then what kind of customize? So for, for an example, if it is a deserted region, what kind of customize so you are going to So if it's a desert region, we will be putting more air vents over there so that uh, the distribution box does not get heated or something like that. And uh, when if it comes to cold colder regions, we will uh, be putting certain coolers inside so that the system does not get heated up. I have so, one yes. similar kind of question. For the extremely cold region in any part of the world, how the electricity can be generated using this technology? Will you have any exclusive strategy? So, so like what I told you, uh, when you are giving customized products, you know, when you are saying cold regions, if we uh, put like certain heaters inside, when uh, when you have something like this, the flywheel is running, everything gets from the alternator with the power goes into the distribution box, that itself creates some amount of heat which is there. So that heat can help that particular system stay warm. So we are, uh, else we will actually put small heaters inside so that our system does not crash or collapse. Very nice. In what, uh, in what capacity presently and uh, how many numbers of machine can you produce in a single point, in the initial period at least? So for the initial period what we are planning to do with deploy is we, are, we want to give out about the three machines, one megawatt, uh, five megawatt and ten megawatt machines to each and every individual state in India and throughout the world wherever we are getting international collaborations also we give out these particular machines. That is our plan. So how are you uh, setting the pricing strategy in the sense is it based on the capacity of the machine or what is the kind of manufacturing machine? So the pricing always differs from the range of the machines. So to know more we would actually like to sit and discuss the respective party and uh, conclude. So what kind of marketing strategy you have for this uh, for the sales of this uh, machine and uh, there are different uh, governments uh, here and uh, do you have any tie-ups with the governments for this? So right now when we say tie-ups for governments, so that's why we are coming with these channel partners. So that's why, that's why we are trying to keep it reasonable. So in every particular region once we have our own channel partner, the channel partner can go to that particular respective government, discuss along with them and then move forward. So that's how we have kept our strategy. This is for an India perspective. So when you're going internationally, uh, all our international collaborators who come forward, they will have their own reputed recognition in that specific country. So they can also help us go over there. Look. So that's our particular plan. For international, I have one more query. For international operation, have you selected any countries as a first phase? Or you have any option for any selected countries? So uh, we have actually selected about 52 countries. Okay. And then for other countries which are not there in the list of 52 also, we never say no. So we would like to take in our international collaborator partners. We have already set for already 52 countries. For 52 plan. countries we have already set. Nice. So to know more, uh, if any international collaborator wants to like, join, they would have to visit our particular website, okay. fill in our form. What is the criteria used to select these international partners? So when it comes to international partners, we would like, expect them to be uh, reputed in, that, in their specific region. The reason being when uh, they are going to collaborate with us, if it's a reputed brand, it becomes easier to be recognized. Where is this machine manufactured and how do you expect to ship this internationally? So, so this particular machine, like what I said earlier, is manufactured in a place called Totokuran, which is in Tamil Nadu, which also happens to have a port. So we can export it from that area to the respective countries. So, uh, I mean, so for the international collaboration you said, right, so how they can approach you? So, uh, like I said earlier, they would actually have to visit our particular website. So, we have a separate uh, page which uh, states our international collaboration. We are given a particular form, they have to fill in the form. So, we have our back-end team which will do the entire background verification on the same. Once we feel that it's fit, then we would go ahead for international collaborations. Now, I just would like to ask you for the general perspective. The people who don't come here and see these machines, 
they may be C, zero percentage input and hundred percentage output. There may be a mission faults. And for those kind of people and audience, what would like to say about it? So uh, when I see, I think the doubt why you are having is because of that small input which we taken. So now uh, when we look at the scale of running for about hundred hours, your input which is taken is just for a margin of about thirty seconds. So that comes even less than point five percent. So anything less than point five percent is considered as zero. So anything even if it was about point five percent to anything point seven, you can round it up to one. So this is that's why we are uh, like hard bound and stating that it is zero percent input and hundred percent output. So you mean to say people whoever is having small doubt about the machine technology, they need to come and visit. They will have to come and visit. Sir, I mean once you come here, that you will just know. But we are uh, answering your question. We stand for that it's hundred uh, zero percent input, hundred percent output. Because whatever marginal electricity which comes in, that is to just kickstart the motor. So that is less than point zero point five percent. Because it's less than point five percent, it's rounded off to zero percent. Fine. I want to ask one question of the internal part of the yes. machine. Does it have a battery inside it or? Ah no sir, it does not have a battery. No battery. Sir. No battery. Uh, one more question. See, following up on this thing, is there any other motor or anything which is hidden which we cannot see? Want, you can. Like, I will just take you and pass it because you are fast. You can come along and you can see that. Uh, let's look down here. There is no. Additional motor or anything as such, which is why no motor which is down. You have to. So, what kind of equipments? I know it is proprietary, but in general terms, what kind of equipments you have? Inside? So inside we have something which is called as a gyro box, which we have. That's like the secret things we have for us for an entire car. That's all that's there. Nothing else. Yes, I have seen some gear boxes. I would like to ask you how many gear boxes inside you have. Currently, there are only two gear boxes. Okay, there is one gear box over here, which you can see. Yeah, yeah. And there will be one gear box inside Napa. Okay, okay. You mentioned for the two gear boxes. Yes. That's a patent techn technology of the gear box inside. Yes. Sir. Can you show me which are those two gear boxes? One is here, which is where the alternator is here, and there is one. That's what we call as a gyro box. It's inside. It's a secret sauce of our entire thing. Why is this box sealed? So this uh, currently we have sealed it and kept because we don't want anyone to actually uh, like know. So it is your IP. yeah, it's a patent one. Else there will be like a lot of paper technology that like so many things to happen. That's why it's nice. But apart from the gyro box. This machine. What is the continuous duration you have run? So because this pulley is, and you say it it runs by itself, right? So what is the longest duration this machine has worked? So the longest, the longest duration actually that the machine has uh, run is for about 100 hours. It 
it's been tested also and it's only a granule for 100 hours. Can it extend more than 100 hours or any, you have any hard limit as 100 hours? We have kept the hard, we have set the hard limit as 100 hours because we have run it for 100 hours. And our post which we will request you to cool down the system for about an hour. So you want it just to stop. So that's only off. for cooling purpose, not it's for any limitation. It's only for cooling. In case, if it is, for an example, it is inside an air condition or cool place where it doesn't get hot that much. Can it, from 100 hours, can you extend it more? We would like, uh, since it, we have tested it and done it for 100 hours, we would like to stick on to 100 because we know our machine capacity and capabilities. If you see, there are actually conveyor belts and then uh, like the bearings, everything is there. We don't want it all to get heated. No friction, no friction should happen. Because of that, we would request you to stop it after 100 hours, cool for about an hour, then run it again. So, one hour cooling period is enough? One hour cooling period is more enough. So, I am just seeing here mechanical and electrical combination, this technology is working out. Yes. But I would like to ask you, where the idea in physics which you are talking about? Sir, if you see, all of this runs under the principle of physics. Okay. <laughs> Everything is only in the pure motion because of physics. Nothing else is anything apart from what physics is. Has anyone scientifically researched this? or any of this kind of motion, any of this kind of machine what you have built? Sir, our particular scientist had done a particular thesis on this and the post pitch is when we had this car. So there is some scientific... Uh, yes, sir. Any ele electrical or mechanical experts have kind of done a review and then review kind of... Sir, so there have been many electrical and mechanical experts who have come, visited, seen and then they have given us like really positive feedback on this. Thing. That is a completely proven technology. One, you said 100 hours this has run, yes. I mean, you have tested, right? Whether is this the machine or is there say, any other machine where any other place, different location which you have deployed? And this particular machine was running for about 100 hours on a government. The same machine? Same machine. Okay. It was running on an on-grid uh, facility and it was running for about 100 hours. Okay. 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 Okay